awakening is a blessing. It's pure enlightenment, arcane knowledge, untold mysteries, unimaginable power. Awakening is a curse. It's all-consuming addiction, existential despair, desperate loneliness, dangerous hubris. Awakening is knowing you can do whatever you want and then doing it. Damn the consequences if you like, but your damnation doesn't erase them. Bending reality to your will intoxicates you, but you're not the only one who can. Staring into the abyss frightens you, but if you can just learn enough and work hard enough, you can conquer even that, can't you? Welcome Seekers, we are Vorpal Tales, and we perform terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week, most days twice a day. If it's the mysteries of the dark and macabre that are your obsession on Sundays, we are playing Unknown Armies, followed by Vampire the Masquerade. On Mondays, Delta Green, beginning this week on Fridays, Black Void's a new campaign under Nebulous Skies. On Saturday, starting the 11th of September, Wraith the Oblivion. And on Sunday, starting the 12th, Cult Divinity Lost. If it's the adventurous and fantastic to feature hubris on Wednesdays, we're playing Deadlands. The finale is this week, tomorrow, starting on September 8th, Octone Cthulhu. On Thursday, Star Trek Adventures, and on Friday night, Scarred Lands Jericho Genesis. On September 4th, Mutant Year Zero on Saturdays. Redaction. Cult begins on the 19th. Stealing sessions from Rachel. There are endless archives of occult secrets and lost knowledge at our website, VorpalTales.com, where you can see our complete calendar, get recaps of shows, and get the links to our past archives on YouTube. You can also find our social media there, our Patreon, and our Ko-Fi. Visit it, and you'll find new enlightenment. Be sure to follow on Twitch and on YouTube. Subscribe and hit the bell, and be alerted of new legacies. Special thanks to Astral Tabletop for our virtual gaming space, at Nate Mid for our custom Astral Sheets, and for music, Ghost Stories Incorporated, Me, You, and Darren Curtis Music. All of these awesome people and products help us touch the supernal for a few hours. Awaken Seekers, practitioners of the art, tell us who you are and the name of your imago in this tale. Hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. And today I will be playing uh, the Abramos of the Free Council. No, no, that is not. I, I said that wrong. I pronounced that incorrectly. Acanthus of the Free Council, Angelique. Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever for now. And you can find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. Tonight, today, I shall be playing Chimera, aka Jack, whose pronouns are he, him. So many things. He's doing so many things. Hello, I'm Kisana. You can find me on twi um, Twitter, yeah, Twitter, at Trukisama, and today I will be playing Private Investigator Juve. Hello, my name is Mary. You can find me at Oh Hello Mare on Twitch and Twitter, and today I will, I will be playing Andromeda, the super duper fallen mage. I'm, I have a new name. It's an R, starts with an R. What is it, Tyler? Uh, wrapped. Got it. Got it. Here we go. Hey guys, I'm Alan, your Eldritch Keeper, and today I will be playing Paimon, the new Orochi Mage. Excellent. All right, Ambrose, unveil the secrets of the last session for everyone. Indeed. Paimon comes to in a cold room. He's wearing just a paper hospital gown. A little breezy, probably, and seems caught in a four point restraint, complete with IVs in both arms. And there are doctors, lots of doctors, including a woman in a business suit. Smiling at Paimon, she says, Oh, you're awake. How are you feeling? When Paimon asks where he is, she assures him it's safe. For him and the other people here. Not for Paimon's friends, however. They seem to be after what's inside of Paimon. His attempt to use magic to escape backfires and causes Paimon to be pulled into her mindscape. Mindscape. He can't resist. 
but he can at least carry some of the contagion with him to infect her. He is now in a cave in which there is a throne made of ancient weapons and bones. The cave is full of monstrous aberrations, and this woman is sitting regally on the throne. She's already been infected, and explains to Paimon how she's the mother of monsters, quite literally. And she wants to make the contagion her own now. She reveals herself as Lilith while inviting Paimon to join her in worship. <clears throat> he kneels and asks how he might serve. Lilith asks if he's sure. He assures her that he is and submits himself to her. Back upstairs, Chimera senses the subtle shift in Paimon's resonance. He knows only that Paimon is somehow changing. We briefly discuss if it's worth it to go looking for Paimon before deciding there's a chance he might just be hiding. Unfortunately, we have no real route towards him and Angelique accidentally trips an alarm while looking for any chance left behind keys. In the basement, Paimon comes to and his restraints pop off. An assistant brings a metal briefcase to Paimon, an executive uniform for Orochi. You know what to do, especially with your friends, she says. The one beholden to Maeve can live, but she wants the one with the horns and for the other two to die. I'll be right back, he says. One more thing, she replies. She brings him a strange-looking sword. It's full of holes and has a faint glow. It radiates supernal magic. This has had many names, and it's for you if you're going to be my new lieutenant. You can call it Excalibur. He puts the sword in its baldric and examines the other weapon, which looks like nothing so much as a Romulan phaser. Upstairs, Juve realizes the alarm has been tripped. He puts on his own mask, inspiring Angelique and Chimera to follow suit. Outside, he builds his own gross barrier of ectoplasm. While he does this, Angelique breaks into a tablet she picked up from the reception room. She can tell it's some kind of strange synthesis of magic and technology. Chimera tries to commune with the local nature spirits and realizes all the normal ones are gone, replaced by Orochi abominations. He summons his own land spirits to counter them. Making his way upstairs, Paimon collects an array of Orochi operatives along with a hunter named Mr. X. Paimon's first move is to co-locate between here and the Silver Ladder Mansion, and he sends several of us away. Before things turn too strange, Chimera manages to free the little girl in the basement. We have to hurry. When I get scared, bad things happen, she says. Drawing on power he didn't know he had, Chimera sends forward a shockwave and banishes all the magic within a quarter mile. Everything. Angelique and Juve never left. What's up, Paimon? Angelique asks. Go home, he tells her, before ordering Mr. X to spare Angelique but attack Juve. After Paimon leaves, Mr. X says he's not going to kill Juve, but on the other hand, he swears we're never going to see Jack again and that it's for the greater good. Angelique tries to talk Mr. X out of doing whatever he's about to do, but it's a ruse. She uses her fey magic to hollow out his regrets and cause him to pin his hopes on her. This has a backlash on Angelique, who gains nightmares as a result. Noticing all the doors have opened here, 
Angelique just tries to keep Mr. X talking while Juve readies a death spell. Back in the basement, Chimera turns to run with Emma and finds himself blocked by a tall, stately redhead. Chimera decides to run, but he watches doors reform into walls. Now, he's trapped in a doorless room with Lilith. I don't believe we were done talking. You're mine now, too. She claims. Chimera rebels at the notion and attacks her with death magic. It works, but she can regenerate faster than Chimera can do damage. She teases Chimera a bit, then says, Fine, you can leave, but when you want me, just call. I'll be there. Chimera suspects this is a trap, but there's now a door here. He starts running through these strange corridors with Emma. He runs past a window and sees blasted gray rock and a beautiful blue marble outside. I think we're on the moon, says Emma. Back on Earth, Angelique's attempt to stall has finally run out. Mr. X listens to something in an earpiece, suggests he and Angelique get dinner sometime and turns to walk back into the building. That's when Juve tries to cast his own death spell. It fails. Angelique tries to find out where Chimera is. It works, but the two swords break. Angelique and Juve bicker briefly about the swords before she looks for Andromeda. She's sitting in a room, legs crossed. On the floor next to her is a terrifying ghost being pet on the head by her. Juve wants to go warn Orochi about her. Angelique doesn't enter the building when Juve does. While this is happening, Lilith congratulates Paimon on a job well done. She opens a portal and leads both of them through it. As soon as she does, containment breach protocol kicks in. Storm shutters separate Angelique and Juve, and the building disappears. It's probably now on the moon as well. Juve takes some time to think. He came here to warn them about Andromeda. He might as well pursue that. Angelique takes the time to call her friends at the Free Council and tells them what's going on. They rib her a bit and start taking bets on whether or not she'll be able to trick Maeve. After the phone call, Angelique figures it's on her to resolve the Abyssal Hole problem, since she has no idea how to reach the moon. On the train there, she encounters Maeve in human form. Maeve offers her the services of the Winter Night. Angelique accepts, and Mike forgot his name was Mike, escorts her through the hedge to the moon. Popping out of the hedge, Angelique finds Juve. She says she'll look for Chimera if he figures out a way to land this on Earth. He does find a control room, but none of the controls take us back to Earth. Mike, however, can take us back through the hedge. Angelique uses her sword to find Chimera, who seems to take a fondness to the winter night. However, when entering the hedge, we are separated from Mike. We're now on our own in the hedge. Juve tries to lead us into the underworld, but Angelique is able to lead them through the trods. It takes about a half a day, and then the trod dead ends at a giant fallen log. Unsure of what else to do, Angelique spends a glamour to try and open any ambient door. The nearby buzzing sound increases and sounds like a voice. Transmission initiated, it says. Quick, someone spend mana, says Angelique. Chimera does so and finds himself 
surrounded by a cloud of bees. Protocol accepted, the bee voice says. But you must accept us. We will become one, and then you will have our wisdom. The bees describe who they are and what they can do. It's a hell of a sales pitch. Angelique accepts. The bee flies down her throat. Her eyes turn gold, and Angelique collapses. Then begins to float. Chimera tries to talk to one of the bees, which claims to be the counter to the blackness infecting Paimon. Chimera asks for proof. The bees explain that they only want to maintain while the contagion wants to consume. That's enough for Juve, who accepts his bee. Chimera is still curious, but Angelique and Juve seem okay. So, to go along with his friends, Chimera also takes a bee. Now that we've all taken a bee, we get visions of where the gates will open. They correspond to some deep, almost organic machines which are responsible for the world working the way it does. A few have already been corrupted by the cult of Lilith, who is using Orochi to further destroy more of these machines. We're not sure what to do next, but Angelique suggests going to the next machine. A golden circle forms, and the bees suggest us to step through it. Initiate boiling joy, they say. We step through and exit into the train. The regular people on the train seem a little surprised, but eventually go back to their business. We finally reach our destination. Angelique buys a paper map and casts a fate spell to find the Gaia engine. It's beneath an abandoned strip mall, recently purchased by none other than Orochi. That night, Emma has a nightmare. Every time she thrashes, something flies across the room. Angelique tries to wake her up. As soon as she touches Emma, there's a huge shockwave. Thank you. Paimon! You're in an elevator. It's a glass elevator on the outside wing of the fanciest skyscraper you've ever seen and easily dominates the landscape of what appears to be Tokyo. Uh, you're rapidly moving up. It's a great view of the city. And in the elevator with you are two uh, random Orochi guards and Mr. X. You are stuck in your own head. You haven't really been paying attention, but he's clearly trying to say something to you that you should be reacting to. <laughs> what? I said, I can't believe you get an audience with the man himself. How'd you manage that? I don't answer. Mm, close to the best. I like that. You'll have to tell me what he's like. Or if he's even real. My money is on he's some kind of AI. No one's ever seen him except in pictures and media. Never comes out of the penthouse. It's very weird. I just wait till I get where I'm going to. Uh, he keeps rambling on, which is strange for Mr. X. Because he's the stoic, quiet guy. And, uh, the penthouse suite finally dings. The door opens. It's an antechamber, all in modern metal and glass. They all just look at you. I step out. Go in. Mr. X says, good luck. One of the guards mutters, I wouldn't want to be you when the door slides shut. 
We had a very nice antechamber with the large oak double doors that lead deeper into the penthouse. All right, I go to the double doors. They don't say anything. I open. You push open the doors and it swings open into one giant open room that has different sections to it. There's a partition where uh, it's glass, but it's the kind of glass that you send a signal through it and it darkens so you can't see through it. It's darkened. That's probably a sleeping area. There's a kitchen in here. There's a living room, a separated den, doors in the back that probably go to the bathroom. But the whole thing is like the size of three or four regular apartments, and it's all glass opaque to various levels depending on what's in use and dominating the middle of it is the fanciest desk you've ever seen it is surrounded by a network of monitors and a guy standing behind it with his back to you looking out the window he's probably 6'5 perfect shape perfectly coiffed black hair looking out on the city in a $50,000 suit Hands behind his back. Manicured nails. Jet black. That's weird. I wait. While I move up to the desk and I wait. He doesn't turn around and he says, Paimon, right? That's what they said your name was? In a voice so silky, Morgan Freeman would be jealous. <laughs> yes. Enjoying your time with us? I am. My wife says you're quite the man. Thank you. So, what do you think about my corporation? It's nice. <clears throat> he chuckles. Nice. Are there any chairs? Oh yeah, there's chairs and couches everywhere in here. Um, next to the, well, like in front of the desk. So if there's yes. a chair there, I'll sit down. Just one, yeah. Real fancy leather deal. So now what? I just thought we could get to know each other, talk. Anyone that impresses my wife deserves a few minutes of my time. Thank you. Uh, he turns towards you. And for a second, he's a biological cyborg horror. Like a distortion haze. But then when he finishes turning towards you, he's just a guy. An impossibly beautiful guy, but still just a guy. He walks over and sits down at the desk, looks you up and down. You can feel his gaze like <coughs> pierce any shields you have. Your magic is impossible to... Your magic cannot possibly resist whatever he is. If you even had any. Seems you turned on your friends fairly easily. You should explain to me why. I seek power. Above all else? Why? What drives you? It's an unexplainable hunger that I have for it. What would you do if you had it? If you had enough to be satisfied? I don't know. He just stares into your eyes for a minute. 
What's your instinct then? What's the first thing that pops into your shriveled little soul? A need to control. Control what? Who? Everyone. Hmm. And what would you do if you had that power and did control everyone? That is a very good question, sir. I think only with actual control would I be able to answer that question. See. He stands up and steps to the side of his desk again, but this time he's still looking at you. Gestures with his hand towards the chair. And let's see. Okay. He can what do you mean by big... let's see? He's gesturing oh. towards his chair. His chair. Oh. Mm. Big boy's chair. Okay. You sit in his chair? Well, he's offering. As soon as your body pressure hits it, it like the cushions writhe and move to reform to you, and the seat actually moves off the ground just enough that you can reach the floor comfortably in the perfect lumbar position. Ergonomic, like it. <laughs> he says Chandra, Samuel, authorization code, and lists off a string you couldn't remember if you wanted to. And all the screens go blank for a second, and then they reset and turn back on like they're waiting for input. And as they blink back on one at a time, each one's a different city. Except for the middle monitor, which has got an operating system you haven't seen before with the Orochi symbol in the corner. Okay. He just stands there observing. So... What exactly does this all mean? How much control are we talking about? All of Arachi and its subsidiaries. Yours for five minutes. See what you do. For five minutes. I try to find each member of my past group uh i mean if it's ultimate power right here that shouldn't be too hard nope takes about a minute and a half for the system to locate them because emma is currently exploding with energy and you actually see in real time what's happening in the hotel room for those of you in the hotel room, you're not really paying attention because you're trying to contain Emma, but the little red power light turns on on every electronic device in the room, even though the devices don't turn on. Including your phones. Because Arachi owns every major cell phone distributor in the world. What's the plan here? What's Orochi's endgame? As I watch that, I ask him, revenge for? Aeons of punishment from the crime of simply wanting to be free. I want to kill God. Because fuck him. That's a tall order. And how does one kill God? Been working on that for a very long time, my wife and I. We have a lot of tools, but you have a fascinating new one that interests us. 
what does one get from killing God? Satisfaction and freedom for all of us. Finally free of a tyrant who keeps us trapped in a perpetual cycle of misery simply to maintain its own existence. How can I help? I'll answer that after we see what you do with the rest of your five minutes. This Emma girl. I'm trying to find information on her using the system. No birth record. Uh, or the earliest record of her is when... Uh, she showed up with her bear, dirty and alone, at a uh, shelter 11 years ago, 11 and a half years ago. Sorry, 12 and a half years ago. Uh, the shelter turned her over to the proper state authorities who put her in a home. It wasn't a great home, not a lot of records of what happened, but... Uh, it burned to the ground. She was put in another home. That one, uh, they just showed up a month later for a wellness check, and she was the only one in there, and everyone else had just disappeared. Not a trace. That's when a road she finally noticed. And she was put in foster care with uh, one of their families, who was actually male and female scientist acting acting as surrogate parents. What is she? She didn't get along well with those foster parents. They both died very odd deaths. Hmm. So she was put in another foster home. By now, she's covered three continents. And we are somewhere in Eastern Europe. A very cold place. There is a classified incident there that you could unclassify if you wanted to. Unclassified? Rochi had found one of those engines that Willis was talking about. They were going to use Emma to try to open it. It went poorly. Reality broke down. They had to isolate the facility and contain the area. Apparently reality still doesn't work right there. I dig in for now it's the engines that attract my attention. Orochi is aware of the location of seven of them, but they sure they're sure there's more. What's the function? They somehow keep the world functioning the way it does, consensual reality. They help maintain it in its present state. I look at the men like what happens if they all get shut down? The predominant theory is that we weaken God perhaps enough to strike. He loses his hold on reality. The more engines that are shut down or broken, the more those areas, the reality around them becomes thin. You stop having to eat, breathe. Gravity doesn't work right, time malfunctions. If it goes too intense, though, if it becomes too intense, though, you start breaking apart. You don't die, but you break apart. What happens with reality when God's gone? Then What's up, the theory, the speculations? Then it's up to us. Wait, are you saying that you kill God, you become God? No, us, and he gestures out the window. God's will is Us. stronger than the united will of mankind, but not if he's gone, then our will becomes dominant. We decide what real is. I send a message to everyone's cell phone in the group. Mm -hmm. So Angelique, 
Inspector Juve, Jack. It just says we need to talk with a capital P at the end. I give them neutral ground as a meeting, a public place, so they know they can be safe. Okay. A large march is in downtown Portland. Seems nice. <laughs> yes, donuts appropriate. I agree. Is this a trap? Do you think? Sometimes. Do I hear? Do I hear Jack say that oh, to yeah. the monitors? Yeah. If Jack is saying that out loud at that moment, yes. You oh, see on uh, your phone. No, it's not a trap. How how are we dealing with Emma? That we'll have to get to in a second, because that's all happening okay. while he's watching you in one of the monitors. Um, Samuel says, so you could see my corporation not exactly the most moral of entities, but the ends justify the means, yes. Freedom at all costs. Freedom for billions. I get out of the chair. So. Okay. Now tell me, what would you do if you had that power? I look outside the window, and I just... Humanity deserves his turn. We deserve to be free. He just smiles at you and puts his hand out for you to shake it. I shake it. When you touch his hand, you can see his true visage for a moment. He is cybernetically enhanced, but never human underneath in the first place. Something older. You can actually see him literally falling out of the sky while his wings burn away in the atmosphere before he hits the ground a very long time ago. All right. And you see glimpses of tens of thousands of years pass. Humanity rise and fall. And every time it rises too far with its technology, some horrible world-shaking calamity hits, like the dinosaur asteroid. It resets everything. Like a reload of Windows. It's a newer model. And every time he tries to stop it, it's thwarted several times until he finally gets too lonely and meets a woman, who then tries to help him stop it. Together they almost succeed. And then they're punished severely for it. And then when the world resets, they're all that's left. This time they just try to raise a family, but then their children commit atrocities. Or at least in the eyes of whatever the divine power is that rules everything. And punishes them again. Drives their kids to madness, causes one to kill the other, in fact. And then everything, and then the final reset is your new reality. And as all of that happens, and you see mother, father, and the one remaining son, uh, power floods into you, and your gnosis doubles. Whatever it is now, it's twice as high. Ouch. All right. Uh, I'm at six now. I dig it. All of that and as long as it takes for a firm handshake. You can you can pick your derangement from that. For yes, the available daddy. Statuses. <laughs> wow, okay. <clears throat> the book, find a derangement you like. It's permanent. Okay. Your friends. Sway them to our cause. Especially the girl's surrogate parent. The young girl? Yes, bring the girl too, but not by force. Lilith tried it that way. Use honey, not a stick. The girl, the girl's surrogate parent, he means Chimera. Until... 
Tell my tell my nephew. It's been too long. He should come see me too. And bring his new partner with him, the one he's riding. Your nephew. I believe you've been calling him Bob. Ah. Bob. <laughs> Will do. He just turns away and goes back to looking out the window like you're not there anymore. I get out. Back at the hotel. <laughs> I like a ring. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, yeah, we but we we knew this, right? Like we, we all understand who he was talking to. No. Yeah, you know no. his, you know his real name too now. It's not Samuel, it's Samael. Hmm. Yeah, but Bob. Bob? Okay. I have some questions, Bob. <laughs> Back at the hotel, Emma is levitating off of the bed with energy making the walls of the room you're in collapse and then spread and then collapse and then spread. She's probably not great. Uh, so, I would like to do something, uh, mage-y, uh, and you can tell me what I can roll, mm -hmm. uh, to try and figure out exactly what sort of energy that she's radiating. Okay. I don't think you need to roll for that, because you have mage sight. Do you have prime? Uh, one dot. All of them. The energy coming off of her is every sphere. Okay. And, and a new one that you've never sensed before, an eleventh. Don't know what that is. Okay. Neat. But whatever uh -huh. it is, it's 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 binding all of the others inside of her. Like a unity. Yay! Um all right, so, uh, wow. Is there any way that I could understand how to like contain this energy safely? Like maybe not in her, but like in a mana battery? That would take way more time than you have in this moment. Also, it immediately occurs to you, that's probably why they were holding her in the facility. They were trying to figure that out too. <laughs> I see. This is clearly why Orochi was interested in this girl. All right. Well, so uh, Angelique uh, will call out like, shit, we've got to contain her somehow. Juve and Chimera, you're both there. I, I, uh, what if we combined all of our spheres? Chimera. That's the surrogate parrot. You get a little freebie. You can't stop this with magic. None of your magic is anywhere near as potent as hers. You stop it by taking care of a little girl clearly having a nightmare. Oh. That's not anywhere near as exciting. Um. <laughs> it can be. Oh, God. <laughs> if your skills at calming emotions aren't good enough. Make it oh, real yeah. exciting. Got a dot in empathy. As you can work as a unit to figure that out. But your power can't stop her. And it's just, you can feel it building, like, you know, the wind up before things explode. Does she have her teddy bear on her? You don't see it. it. You know it's here, but you don't see it. But her bed is, like, thrashed apart by nightmare thrashing. Hunt for teddy bear. Floor. Okay. So. Betty. Apparently Betty doesn't Betty. see over Rashi. It's kind of far enough. <laughs> uh, you can make a search check while the other two try to do whatever they're doing. So, Wits plus Composure. I'm going to die, aren't I? The child <laughs> is going to kill me. It was nice knowing you. What's Juve and Angelique do while... Chimera says, I gotta find the bear. Oh, yeah. Right. <sighs> Chimera yells out that 
he has to find the bear, and Inspector Juve prepares to cast a lodestone targeting that bear so that it's attracted to him. Physically, magnetically oh God. attracted to him. I'm... So let me stack that up real quick. Hopefully this doesn't attract all of the teddy bears in the city. <laughs> I can specify, like, specifically this teddy bear. Yeah, but if you get Paradox, that's what <laughs> Tyler's probably going to do, because I did the thing and opened my mouth. I mean, can can I just look for it? <laughs> look for what? The bear? That's what Chimera's doing. By the way, I got... Yeah, but, like, in a non-magic, a non-magical way, because, like... Yeah, you can both physically search for the bear, which plus composure for you, too. Is... Okay. <laughs> 10 uh, re-roll doubles or okay then I got one two three four five successes you don't need to Chimera gets a crit success and finds the bear so you can both take different actions uh like I don't want Emma to hurt herself so can I just like gently hold her? Yes. All right, I'm probably going to get zapped, but I'm hoping the bee will help. Ah, uh, roll presence plus empathy. Okay. That's not a bad die pool. Uh, one success. Okay, what's Juve doing? Juve is going to cast a combined spell to first regurgitate ectoplasm and shape it into a glass of milk. You're going to make the child drink your spirit boogers? Goo milk? The babe's going to drink the milk. goo milk? Hey, we need hot milk, and it's kind of short notice. Hey. <laughs> Juve is a good parent, and so he knows how to make milk just on command. It's an important skill. Please tell me this is not life. like just just a form of milk made out of ghost snot. Boo milk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, not at all. It's actually a great yeah. idea, but it is going to be funny in a second. You succeed oh, in really? making goo milk. I won't make you roll because that's hilarious. <laughs> if only we had the aether milk. <laughs> I know. Oh man. Well, like, do you think it could be like a substitute the way almond milk could be a lactose free substitute <laughs> for the pancake? Hi, Para. You also roll presence plus empathy with three three extra dice. The bear gives you oh. the bear boosts you as if it was willpower. Okay, that was I got too presence excited. What was that empathy. again? Presence and empathy. And then that was two free dice, you said? Yep. Okay. Appreciate that. Because that was going to be only three dice. Looks like uh, someone's calling the Department of Children and Families <laughs> on Jew. <Yep. laughs> only one success. Between Angelique rocking the child and you providing the teddy bear and being like, good kid, calm down. Or whatever terrible parenting Chimera does. <laughs> uh, she slowly comes to out of the nightmare and then immediately, like, super hugs Chimera around the neck. And as she comes to, the energy stops vibrating the room. Still, like, there's static electricity in the air, though, and her eyes are just, like, a deep gold color. Radiating a oh, faint that... heat. That's she looks over your shoulder at Juve and says, Oh, that's very nice of you, but no thankful. No thank you. I'm tic-tac-toe intolerant. <laughs> what? Huh? Just part of this, Juve hasn't even brought it into existence. It's just ectoplasm and Twilight, so he's holding an invisible cup and just goes, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then just throws it to the side, dispels it. Broke Meredith, um. I'm happy. 
My brain can't. <laughs> Um, I, did did you 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 were having a bad dream, huh? Yeah, it was scary. Do you want to talk about you it? You have a lot of bad dreams. Yes. It usually helps when when the nice lady with the red hair sings me a lullaby. Okay. Um, you do remember a if, very specific if, lullaby that Lilith was homing Chimera. Your brain recorded it like an imprint, like a uh, primitive primal memory encoded in your subconscious. I, uh, you know, I, I think I remember that lullaby, but. I do want to ask you something. <laughs> if she was so nice, why why did you want to leave with me? Well, she's two ladies. She's a nice lady, and then she's the not nice lady. Oh. That's that's interesting. Um, well you don't you don't have to go back to her ever again if you don't want to. And and I can sing you that lullaby because I remember it. You're two people, too, but they're both nice. Kisses you on the cheek. He looks over at at Angelique and Juve, and, and is is Mayor there? Nope. Or is... Okay. Looks over at Angelique. We left her on the moon. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm on the moon with a pet dog meditating. Life is great. <laughs> there is only Zool. <laughs> um, he'll, he'll look over at Angelique and... Juve and kind of like mouse she sees avatars at this point nothing surprises me about this child I like avatar it's a cool show he can he can bend air it is a good Wasn't show that the one with all the blue people I didn't like that one that one was weird yeah yeah it was Do you do you want to stay up for a bit or do you want to go back to sleep? Read me a story. Okay, I read you a story. And I'll sing you that lullaby, and then you'll get some good sleep. I hope. Then we move back to the moon facility. Hey, Andromeda <laughs> is in the super haunted basement level of uh, the. Manticore facility that was transposed to the moon because you engaged lockdown protocols. Um. You don't remember getting here. All you know is you woke up here. And it's really dark. And there's ghosts everywhere. And it's kind of fucking scary. I would like to, uh... So... Try to, like, take a look around. Um... You're also super hungry. Very hungry. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh... What's the nearest ghost to me like? Like, there's a ghost just chilling. Like, are they like screaming? Are they just floating? They, what are What are they up to? They kind of stay like just outside your radius, so you can only see them as moving shadows. But it's like being in a haunted asylum. Things move. There's so I can't talk laughter, to any of them. Screams. You could if you tried. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to try to talk to one of them just to, because I'm guessing I don't know how I got here. Am I able to look out the window and see the moon? Like what? <laughs> No, because you're in the sub-level below the ground. Great. Cool. <clears throat> and you've been awake for exactly like 15 minutes. Debating on whether or not you should go look around, but radius of freaky ghosts. Yeah. So, uh, noting the freaky ghosts and trying to open my... The one you're trying to talk to is just mm -hmm. like an abnormally tall woman, woman with short arms and long legs. And just hair floating around ahead, you can't see the face. Humming in a very discordant, off-key fashion. You don't like the tune. Kind of creepy, yep. Uh, uh, just sits there, and uh, Andromeda kind of figures out what she's going to say, and just goes, Excuse me. 
I, uh, can you hear me? The head moves in a nodding fashion. Okay, great. Um, uh, so listen, I, uh, I need to, I need to get by. I gotta, like, uh. The head tilts to the side, but the whole body, like, snaps when it happens. Uh huh. Mm. And a whispered voice says, Why? Uh, because I'm trying to find my friends, and I think they're that way, and some of y'all are, like, in the way, man. So it would be well, really cool. Your friends. And then it's, like, right in your face immediately. And it leans forward real slow, so its uh -huh. face is next to your ear. Are all uh -huh. gone. Okay, question. Gone like you gone or gone like they found the exit door gone? Very important distinction. And then it's suddenly back at the original position. Mm -hmm. Not here. Not here. Good. So not... This is not among their home. Their home. But it's your home now. Mmm, I love a riddle. Really love those. Um, great. So they're gone. Did you see which way they went? Sir and or madam? Ferocious giggling. Down. Thousands of miles down. Andromeda has that moment where she thinks back to Earth and environmental science in high school. It was like thousands. I don't know if thousands, maybe a couple thousands to the center of the Earth, which would make sense to hell. Are we going to hell? Oh, we're going anyway. Okay. Um, so she's like, okay, down to the center of the Earth. And like, so Andromeda's just like, cool. Uh, could you point me to the stairs? She just giggles as all the ghosts slowly start fading away into darkness. Uh huh. And then from somewhere to your east, you hear a door get kicked open and running boots and shouting orders. <laughs> clear on the left, clear on the right, take up positions. Weapons free, hold your fire. Weapons, and so hold your, hold your fire? Weapons like, free it... means take the safety off. It doesn't mean you fire, though. Oh. Mm, good. And then Paimon Ooh. walks calmly around the corner in full Arachi gear. Hey, buddy. Were you muted? Hey. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> how are you doing? Um, guessing I just woke up. The you notice? That, oh, sorry. You notice that Paimon and like the eight soldiers that enter the room after him, flanking corners with very advanced-looking assault rifles, are all mm -hmm. have rebreathers. They're not wearing them, but they're hanging around their necks. And mm -hmm. strange helmets with like the faceplate that is snapped back out of sight. Almost looks like spacesuits. Carry on. Interesting. Yeah, so Andromeda is just like, uh, I'm, you know, just woke up kind of having this thing where I'm forgetting where thing, when things are happening. Uh, it reminds me of college. I just extend my hand, both my hands to her like this. Andromeda just kind of looks there and, and pokes the middle of his palm on one hand. Come on, give me your hands. Everything's fine. I don't know. That suit's not exactly screaming fine to me. Right so I now. get really close. Okay. And Andromeda, <laughs> like like Andromeda's face, my face. This keeps happening. This is great. Cool. <laughs> she's she's like, yeah. And I just cool. hold her hands. Andromeda makes this face at the being touched part. Go ahead. Samael, I know you're in there. Your uncle wants to see you. No, oh, Samael was the CEO's name. Oh. Uh, Bob. Bob. Yeah. 
I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> All right, so so what is Bob Bob? No, or does he have Andromeda? Actual, Bob has a real, real name. name. Huh? But I Bob don't... is still the nephew, right? Yes. <laughs> My Bob is the nephew, but he's got a real name, yes. and Andromeda knows it. So Bob, Uncle wants to see. Uh, ah, how do you with the who, uncle? I just let Andromeda go and I pull back. Bob's your uncle. Like, is this a joke? Ha ha ha. Like, is this what's happening? Like, we should go is with it a him. Funny... Hmm? That's in your head. We should go oh. with him. Okay. No touchy, though. Point the way. Let's go. She just like sus eyes all of the all of the suits. And if they have like just you know how like suits and stuff would have like little buttons and whatnot on them. Do I have and an she, actual Oroshi suit? Yeah. Oh damn. That's like funny. yeah, like you you look like a fed. And so she's just oh, like no, this is a combat suit. It's like oh, sci-fi body armor. But oh, sci fi buddy. You do own the Arachi suit now, too. The really snazzy looking one. That's what I was thinking. When I kept hearing the suit, I was thinking like the like really crisp tailored suit. I didn't know you meant like the suit, like sci I'm going to kill you suit. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I was thinking the men in black suit. Um, but either way, she walks by like one of the random soldiers and just like if there's any sort of button on the shirt, just goes, hey. hey poke and then walks away you're able to tell when you walk past the soldiers they essentially have a version of military rank mm -hmm. Paimon's has a lot more stripes than the rest of them like a lot more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh been busy you know how's your family how's things going it seems like we've not talked in a bit a lot has changed Paimon if that's what you go by anymore a lot has changed uh -huh. A lot is going to change. Uh huh. Inside, inside her head, Bob. What the hell is he talking about? Here's he works for my uncle now. Okay, cool. For someone who's pretending like we've been dating for a long time and been really close, and like is mental air quotesing to Bob, he's like someone who we're like we're this close. Is this first time I'm hearing about your family. That's kind of rude, Bob. That's not how things go. I should know a little bit more about your family. Do I need to be worried about your uncle? <laughs> if you want to take things to the next level, my dear, you can meet my family. Haha. <laughs> Haha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> it's like next you level. You should see my father. That's terrifying. We'll start with the uncle then. <laughs> So Andromeda just is mentally sus -eyeing Bob in her head, sus -eyeing Paimon there in real life, and is just like walking around looking at the, like just, just basically, you know, like looking each soldier up and down like a tree while also trying to look around and see if there's anything of note or importance here. Uh, yeah, for one thing, when you get up out of the basement levels, you're on the moon. Okay, so now I see the... <laughs> So, <laughs> all right. Multiple facilities. Uh, first, uh, so what rovers, would happen? Rockets. Moment that they walk by the first window, Andromeda is just going to be like, "Holy shit!" Okay. Uh, you notice a few things that the other group uh -huh. didn't really have the time to slow down to figure out that it's a small town. It's worth of buildings here. The one you're in seems to be abandoned, but the rest of them, you can still see people moving in and out. There's some people on the surface of the moon. Mm -hmm. At least you would guess there's at least a few hundred people here. Maybe more that you can't see. Maybe a few thousand. And you're on the dark side of the moon. So no one on Earth can see us. Yes. Great. Cool. Me too. Me too, Ambrose. Um, you know what uh, I was singing? I got you. I was right there. Um... So Andromeda will have that moment of just kind of looking out because the stars and space and stuff, that's like all her jam. Just kind of take a moment like, all right. Thought a lot of things about space. 
Really didn't see this one coming, Paimon. You also see a super advanced kind of ship that doesn't look anything like a shuttle or doesn't look anything like uh, Musk's rockets or Bezos' rockets. Mm -hmm. Looks like something out of the Expanse. Mm -hmm. And on it, it says Mars 3. Looks like it's being prepped for launch. Looks like that could hold 100 people all by itself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Andromeda's doing that thing where, like, on the outside, she's like, okay, mm -hmm, cool, taking this at pace. And on the inside, she's like, I'm in space. I'm in space. We're in space. We're in space now. This is cool. Oh, my God. But we're in space now. So and that's apparently Arachi's been to Mars at least twice. And, uh, and Arachi's in space. And Arachi's doing this. And Arachi's opening holes into the abyss, which is beyond space. So she's, like, doing that, like, Charlie Day with, like, the red string thing mentally in her head. And she's like, okay. ah, yeah, uh, one second. It's not every day you end up on the moon, unless maybe now you do, but we were just down there, and now we're on the moon. You can't just tell a girl, walk along, can you? Like, no, come on. You do want so, to get to the other, your other... <laughs> friends paimon but you're not in any rush and you are trying to sway them maybe you know mm -hmm. let her have her moment yeah so uh you. while any of this is going on with any peripheral mage site do i have anything in particular like going ping ping everything here has supernal energy so they, the whole they, thing they have is... found a way to combine magic with science it's almost so it's like uh, what's, what's the word technocracy yeah that's a technocracy right. or something that would be that would be what a crazy word that would go with that um yeah so she's just like okay cool all right mm -hmm. okay we're on the moon town on the moon and then she's she just looks at paimon or the other guys is like does this town have a name name of the town moonland moonlandia it does have a name paimon and if you actually to tell her or just make a smart ass <laughs> reply it's up to you i mean in my head canon this is all what's the name do i actually know <laughs> inspiration we're on inspiration well i feel inspired right now sure oh that's the actual. good good <laughs> great yeah okay being inspired is good and being like that is weird but let's go i guess <laughs> so what you don't tell just... her is that the other town that you can't see from here is Utopia. How many are there? Two okay. on the surface and one below the surface of the moon. So three. Okay. They are mining rare metals out of the moon. All right. And inside her head, she's just like, Bob, did you know about Moon Town? There are many colonies of magi in other realities. Yeah. There's more moon towns! Like, to Bob in her head. She's like, wait, is this what you meant by when you said you would take me to space? You could have just said there was a town on the moon. That would have been so much easier than all of this, Bob. There are many worlds and many magi on them. Moon mages. And she's just... Because she just woke up from meditating yes. and is on the moon. So she's a little... You know, everything's like, whoa, right now. Moon you get, mages. You get to the <laughs> entrance to the facility where you could see this used to be on Earth because originally there were just glass doors going outside, but now they're connected to a, a compression chamber, an airlock. Mm. So as, as Andromeda, who loves space and all things space, including science fiction and all that, kind of looks at that and then looks at everybody else's suits and then looks down at her hippie clothes and it's just like, Oh, you've got, a, you've got a uniform for her. Oh, they put me... Oh, No, I'm like I'm telling Paimon, he has one to give you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's He's not like... with me now, right? I yeah, mean, you, you're you not... We're going to process her. There's a picture for you, Andromeda. Oh, sweet, thanks. Uh... P.S. How do you want oh. to process her before you let her exit the facility? Because you do have to put her in a suit to leave, you know, to go on the moon. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like, ooh, I'd like that. Sure, you know, when in Rome or when on the moon, they say. <laughs> All right, let's go. Cool. 
the combat uniform is the same, but there's a picture anyway. It's not a female. I like that. Um, yes. That's the one you'd be wearing because that's also the space suit. That's so how do you one. process her? It's just a word. Just okay. get her ready. Yep. They teach you how to put it on and wear it and what, you know, don't, don't unbuckle this when you're outside. <laughs> if this red light turns on, tell someone, don't die. <laughs> Pressurized. <laughs> Uh, you tell her she about keeps... the gravity shift. You're gonna let her figure that out herself. No, there's I, artificial I, I, gravity I, in the building. I, 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 I do everything that needs to be done okay. for her not to be harmed, and you know, no surprises until we get to you know, Uncle. So you don't take <laughs> no a step surprises and launch for 50 feet away. <laughs> Those of you, then we're gonna jump back to the hotel. Those of you back at the hotel. What do you do with your day? All your, right, your text message so... did say meet at the large marches at 6 p.m. Uh, it feels like a trap. But he said it wasn't a trap. But it feels like a trap. It's most definitely yeah. a trap. Yep. What if I... Pack bars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when in doubt, Admiral Akbar. Um... Chimera is actually gonna reach out to his path, the Thyrsus Mages, and do a little research on Lilith and Samael. Okay. You're you're reaching out to who now? Uh his his mage path. The Thyrsus. Um, oh, you mean you actually want to call the organization. You want to call fellow wizard types. That you or want to call Hogwarts. Um, <laughs> Only if I get McGonagall on the phone. <laughs> uh yeah, you can call them up and be like, so we ran in, are you going to tell them you ran into these people? Are you going to tell them why you want to know about these names? Um, I don't know if that's exactly wise, because they might just laugh it off, or they'll be like, you're in over your head, back off. I we mean, don't really have that cat option. Cat? Uh, you, you are now the horned god, so, you know... Yeah, but does that make me an abomination with my uh, origin people? You don't know. I, so, okay. So I will research more than one thing. I will research Lilith and Samael and tell them about the gates. And I will also research bygones, particularly the White Stag. If they have a facility, I'd rather go and research it myself instead of asking them. But if there's not that option, he'll, he'll just talk to them. Alisai, the antlers have been absorbed into Chimera's body because Chimera has joined with them. Didn't take long. So, which one are you going to ask about first? Uh, the bygone to see what their reaction is. So that I know it's safe or not safe to tell them about this situation. Which organization is yours again? Sorry. Thyrsus. Oh. We're the thirsty mages. Uh, so you're just calling other Thyrsus mages, not like a particular faction. Thyrsus would be sad to um, hear about the loss of a bygone. They would be very disappointed and distraught. Especially one like that in nature spirit. But I... they would be very pleased to learn that you at least retained the power and thereby theoretically given enough practice tapping into that power. Maybe it's memories, which is more important to them. It's knowledge. 
So then, yes, he would he would share what exactly happened. And that would also lead into having to tell them about Lilith because Lilith is indirectly the one that wanted the horns, even though it was Maeve. But he's going to leave Maeve out because that's Angelique's story to tell. I appreciate that. You have enough people on your tail. So which of the two of them do you ask about first? Of the names you were curious about then? Uh, Lilith, since she leads from the bygone into the, the Lilith encounter, basically. Uh. Your faction wouldn't know any, like, true creation myth about that sort of thing. They would have several different versions of creation myth. But all of the versions do recognize the name Lilith. And your faction would actually be of the opinion that she would have been one of the first awakened magi in the world in the first age of humanity. At the time, going under the name Ki Sika Lilike. Um... She was cast out by the other humans because they were scared of her power and she refused to submit to the priesthood so the humans found, uh, rose up against her including other kinds of humans that weren't awakened mages but had power of the divine on their side their faith had a real strength to it and also they joined with the spirits of the wild that didn't like these first humans awakening because it threatened the power of nature it means werewolves they drove her out into the wilderness where she wandered for a time until she found another like her, an outcast of his own kind. They joined together. So he'll he'll say, put a put a pin in that finding another person like her. It's for you in the Discord region. What if Because by now, in this story, they'd hear about the encounter with Lilith and the finding of Emma. Actually, he might leave Emma out for now. Just in case. Yeah, he'd leave Emma out for now. Um, he would say, what if Lilith felt like two different people, one good and one bad? Would one of those be the Imago? And is it reversible? A being that ancient probably is two people. The Imago is probably as real at this point as the person. They're probably indistinguishable. One is magic, the other is human, but the other is also human while the other is magic. At that point, when your gnosis is that high, two faces, one body, especially existing for that long with those memories, your mind would fracture to some level. Immortality. Anyway... At a certain point, immortality becomes a curse. Hmm. it's very likely that she still has a human side and also has the monster is there a way to appeal to the human side remind her of the things she cared about when she was human good luck figuring that out <laughs> huh oh, I think I might have an answer there maybe just maybe you could um, also try to appeal to the host that cast her out cast out her old lover her old lover there wouldn't actually, be Samael would it they wouldn't know that just that the story is she found someone to love in the wilderness someone that wasn't human and was cast out by his own people by the host they would know he was cast out by the host and was some kind of demon when they say the host they mean exarchs or what mages worry about, but there are actually four uh, supernatural hosts. The Exarchs, who are the mages who ascended like Lilith. But unlike Lilith, they chose to exit the world and maintain power in the Supernal Realms. She keeps herself here. Uh, An Exarch like also the Unity? Yes. Oh, we've we've got a big problem then. Uh, also, 
there's the host of the god machine and then there's the two hosts that try to fight the god machine in favor of the humans but they have very they have very different ideas of how to go about it the nephilim and the gregory we could pit them against each other they already are they've been at war forever which is why they can't unite to defeat the god machine But Samael was a member of the Nephilim. They would know that much. That faction. Possibly the leader. They don't really know. But the Nephilim believe the ends justify the means. The Gregory believe that it's in the hands of the humans and they should be guided and protected as much as possible against the God Machine. Hmm. And there's the angels who just use humans as the machines they were meant to be. So we've got a whole mess here. Gates are being opened. Gaia machines are being destroyed. Lilith is real. What's a Gaia machine? would be the question you'd get. Uh, he'll, during this phone call, he'll, like, look over to Angelique or Juve, like, how do I explain this? Engines of reality. And he does have it on speaker in case anyone oh, needs okay. to chime in. Your response to that you to get would be, yeah, that sounds bad. You should probably not let that happen. Yeah, any chance we could get a little backup? So that you have your own squad, as it were, but if you know the locations of other engines, they can send other squads to them, yes. Huh. Gotta remember, too easy to forget, especially in a large group of six players or five players, but mages are extremely rare. That's Being true. able to pull together 50 mages would be like the entirety of North America and probably part of South America <laughs> into one team. There's a lot of humans um, that assist mages that are aware of what the reality is, but not a lot of actual mages. He, he would with Juve and Angelique's um, consent share any locations that we know of that we're not you only know of the one at. so far Damn. but it occurs to you who might know i'm on fuck <laughs> and you know just just a side question because all this information was super helpful and all how how would you how would, how would you temporarily subdue a mage who's gone off the rails and now works for Lilith and, you know... What do you mean works for Lilith? Uh... You didn't tell them that her cover human identity is board of director of Arachi. So about that, uh, <laughs> Lilith's human guys is an Orochi executive. You hear some typing on a keyboard and the person goes, huh, it's kind of like Superman's hidden identity, so obvious you miss it. Yeah. There is a board, yeah. there is a member of the board of directors called Lily Angle of Orochi. Of course. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot has happened and uh, and I probably should have updated you all sooner, but uh, been a little busy. So the Thursas don't actually have like an organized group. It's more like covens of witches that stay in touch. There's other organizations like the Silver Ladder that Paimon was a member of that are like that. So they don't actually yeah. expect you to update them on anything. <laughs> You call each other when you need help because there's big deals, but there's no central organization to the Thursis. Okay. It's like individual cells that can contact each other. 
Well, uh, my suggestion is, is contact all the other cells, get them on high alert and updated on what's happening. Because we're busy closing gates and trying not to get murderified by Orochi. He does that same sarcastic smile, even though he knows that they can't see him. We'll reach out to our networks, sure. We know some people that aren't mages that maybe could help, too. Aren't mages? Yeah. Who else would be able to help with this? This is huge. We know some shapeshifters that might be interested. Uh, we know a couple of... Uh, Strange things. They have a lot of experience with weird stuff in Chicago. A couple of ladies, they could probably help us out. Interesting. Okay. Some other types. The world's full of weird things. Well, that blows my mind. I thought mages were the only beings powerful enough to do something like this, but learn something new every day, I guess. The world's full of a lot of weird shit. Yeah. Uh, Do you know mummies are real? That's really weird. You're kidding. That's ridiculous. Now I know you're just fucking with me. Anyway, so back to serious shit. Um, do either of you, Angelique, do you have any things to ask my friends on the other line here oh god oh god we're all gonna die so angelique's the optimistic one um <laughs> i got nothing important to ask them i can wait okay well then uh you've got my number if you find anything relevant please give me a text just in case we're sneaking around top secret facilities trying not to die because, you know, a call would be a little difficult to answer in that situation. Good luck. Don't die. <laughs> Thanks, I think. I'll hang up the phone. Okay. Mommy's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Emma tells you she's hungry. Wants to go to McDonald's. McDonald's? That's so bad for you. Are you sure? Hey, pizza? Get the kid McDonald's. I like pizza. I like pizza too, actually. And if you order it just right, it's got vegetables too. <laughs> so you can order pizza? Yeah, it's got all the food groups. <laughs> you go to order pizza and there's something weird about your card. Because, you know, you always check your card before you order stuff. That's how debit cards work. Like, yep, my balance is right. And then you look at the screen again, you're like, that's too many zeros. So you check your deposits. You recently got a deposit from Faust Capital to the order of $500,000. And it's just signed P. What? What? So you check. You all do. Faust, uh, Faust, Capital, Faust Capital, the world's largest banking group, has submitted $1.5 million among the three of you just from a certain P. He's toying with us. And the and the deposit information, the note, you know, that your bank always says next to it, just says 6 p.m. large marches. I mean... Okay, I wasn't suspicious before... There's a lot of levels He's to that message. Problems. A lot of levels to that <laughs> message. Here's some I'm sorry money, but also if I can do this, you're going to show up whether you want to or not. It's probably subtly being implied there. So, uh, Angelique would like to get to large marches reasonably early. Um, you know, after the pizza arrives, have a slice or two, then go there. Um, and so I want to set up a couple contingency plans and I will explain this to Juve and Chimera as well in case they want to contribute. Okay. Um, 
So, because time is uh, one of my better uh, arcana, what I would like to do is set up something where, like, if Paimon gets weird, essentially hit a panic button and freeze time long enough for us to leave. But, like, if you can open portals to somewhere else, like, that would also, like, be helpful. So how long could you stop time? Uh, I don't know. With three dots, how long can I stop time? Uh, I mean, it depends how much paradox you want to take, really. It's all on the paradox, but realistically, to have enough dice at a chance of succeeding, maybe 15 minutes max, probably 15, 30. And that, that's a lot of paradox. I, I mean, I have an idea. Yeah. With, with average success chances, a minute or two. I mean, that's fine. I mean, we only need, like, stop Paimon for a minute, open the portal, bug yeah. out, yeah. close the portal. Yeah. That you okay. can do, yeah. Yeah. Oh. What if... What if you don't need a panic button? What if you peek through time to see if the meeting goes well? Oh. I could do both. Yeah, that, yeah. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah. Uh, we will take our 10 minute break since we're about halfway and we'll rack this up so that Rachel can just roll it when we get back and we don't have to make the audience wait because I need to roll that one up too to see. <laughs> nice. All right. So yes, don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in 10 minutes.
And we've returned. Okay. Angelique. You get six dice for the spell, and the amount you have to roll for Paradox will determine be determined based on how many alternate realities you want to try to see. You get two for free. You're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> All right. What if I just want to see the most likely reality first? Just the six dice. No paradox at all for just one. Okay. But you're going to have to define most likely. As in a set of choices would be required. A probable choice set. All right. In that case, I would like to see three different realities. Okay. So then roll three paradox dice. That is... Oh. <laughs> shit. That is no successes. Oh, that's actually good. <laughs> no paradox. Yay! Now you can roll the spell. That is two successes. That is enough. In no particular order. You form an alliance of convenience. And you basically say, sure, we'll work with you for now, but you don't get to do any experiments on us or some such other uh, contract. And you attempt to get Paimon to bind that contract to Feiwei because you don't trust him. That's the most likely outcome. At least in your opinion. Okay. Still in no particular order, though. Second possible outcome, shootout. Most of you die. But then weird shit happens, and you can't see what it is because it's all fuzzy and there's a buzzing in your ear. Third outcome. Uh, it is a trap. And some of you die with that fuzzy outcome again, and some of you are dragged off for experimentation. And that outcome, though, even Paimon doesn't know it's a trap. Because he got set up, too. Okay. All right. So, I got some good news. In that I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is an alliance of convenience with, with Paimon. Where we tell him, you know, uh, we'll work together, but Orochi doesn't get to experiment on us. Uh, although, if things go real weird, uh, we're either going to end up dead or in an Orochi testing facility. Damn. That's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, alright, so... It might be a trap. If it is a trap, they're also double crossing Paimon. Well, that's good, bad, bad, good. Yeah, I don't, there's, I mean, it's not good, but it's not bad, or it's good and bad. I, yeah. I mean, uh, he's not actively working against us. Yeah. I mean, he did send us money. In the shootout, I couldn't see who shot first, so who knows. So I guess nobody nobody started shooting. Uh, I'm still going to set up that contingency where... Alright, so I could stop time, create a portal, zot out. The only thing is, is like I don't know how to create a portal, so I'm going to have to... I need help on this one. I mean, our escape route could be Twilight. Yeah, but the thing about that, we can go back out, but you can't bring your material possessions out. Not back with you. So we set up a spot with clothing. 
Um, because being naked in front of a 12 year old kid is probably not legal. Plus, you probably have hairy butts, Giggles. <sighs> All right, look, you, you were supposed to be asleep. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Why would I be asleep? I'm 12. Wait, don't only little kids take naps. I like to nap. Little kids and old people. Hey, now he's not wrong. Don't disrespect your elders. Anyway, how's that pizza? It's pretty yummy. She has picked okay. off all of the black olives, though. As you yeah. do. That's fine. Also, this is when it occurs to you, her fourth piece in, she's tic tac toast intolerant. And you fed oh, her God. pizza. <laughs> Extra cheese. God damn it, Tyler. This is... You're I'm a terrible gonna... parent. I'm gonna pop across the street and pick up some lactate. Okay, then. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, could we come out of Twilight in here in this hotel room? I mean, we could come out wherever we damn please. The problem is, again, butt naked. I mean, back into the world. If it's naked, then I would suggest either here or where Angelique is in London. She meant uh, nope. Uh, yeah, the Brad. other one. Yeah, it's like, wait, there's another Angelique. Angelique. I'm confused. Wait a sec. <laughs> when were you gonna tell me about confusing. this? <sighs> so we could pop back out in London. Uh, that's true, and is the longest distance from where we're meeting, so it's super safe. Yeah. Kind one of problem. We'd still need to walk across an ocean or uh, go down under. Wait, there's oceans and ghost land? Yeah, there's oceans. It's twilight. Oh. It's a, it's like a reality on top of our reality. It's not like the, the weird, like, what do you even call your place? And he's pointing to Angelique. What do you call that place? The, 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 the forest? Whatever. The, the, the hedge? Yeah. The hedge, sure, yeah. That's the one. No, you still have to walk. No. Maybe we can find a ghost boat. But is the it wait, is a ghost boat a dead boat? Yeah, the like the Titanic. Yeah. Wait, what what? <laughs> yeah. Everyone was like, oh the Titanic. So when the Titanic broke, it died. Ghost boat. Titanic does run on a regular service schedule in Twilight. It's not even a joke. I don't... I, I mean, don't, I like that movie. I don't know how I feel about this, but... As long as we don't crash into another glacier, it's fine. Another iceberg. Ghost glaciers? Funny you should mention Ghost that. Glaciers. There are a lot of dead glaciers in Twilight now. <laughs> yeah. Global warming. <laughs> Everyone's so like, depressing. oh, the glaciers. The You're glaciers welcome. die. Ghost glacier. Yeah. What the fuck? Anything that has physically existed has a ghost. I... He thinks he doesn't mention Stephen that. Stephen Hawking's he wheelchair all... has a ghost. He thinks of all the pairs of underwear that. Andromeda's good sweet side has a ghost. Oh, because yeah. oh. it's super dead. Haha. Oh. Mm. Uh -huh. Somewhere out there, there's a spry thirty-year-old me. <laughs> Full of hope. The hope died a long time ago. Wait, so the hope is the ghost or any anyway. Yeah. Um I think it's smartest to pop out here because we came here for a reason to take care of that gate. Yeah. You're right. So as nice as London would be, probably not the best idea to get jobs done. 
Plus, you'd have to extend the game by a whole two sessions to cross Ghost Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> or we could go through the underworld, one tunnel, and then pop out another. Just have to say hello to all the dead. Just, it, it's fine. Don't worry about Literally it. Literally bring out your dead. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Uh... Okay, so Twilight Hotel Room, if shit goes down. Uh, leave, leave all your your dedicated tools here. I hate to say it. Smart. You know, you can't bring them back. Also really sucks. Also, I'll have to wear my not so great goth jacket. I don't want to lose this one. Um, hey, <laughs> Angelique. In the most successful future you saw. Yeah. Who all was there? Because I don't know if it's a good idea bringing Emma. Uh, did I see Emma in any of the futures? All of them. Uh, she's there in all of them. How much would it mess things up if she wasn't there? And that would include a future that Rachel did not see. You picked right. three. She didn't tell you all of them. My thought is is that we probably don't want to leave her by herself or leave her unsupervised. Which is why she's in all three of the most likely. Because you said something out loud about wondering if this was a trap and Paimon immediately sent you a text message. Meanwhile. He's probably watching us right now. Yep. So if we stash Emma somewhere, he's going to know. Meanwhile, in a private jet, Andromeda is peppering Paimon with questions while he watches this conversation take place, yes. <laughs> right. Wait, so, how do they see inside of a private hotel room? Every electronic in this place is made by QBL Media, except your cell phones, which are made by, uh... Who makes the cell phones? Anansi Technologies. Yeah, and Probably like... Probably an TV, too. I don't think Angelique even knows that much. She's just like putting two and two together of. So Paimon and Andromeda have seen me naked. They only, you, you, you assume they only turned on the shit like today. But yeah, you would have to assume your cell phones can hear you and see you, the TV, the radio. Rule of thumb, the always player. assume at least 12 different things are looking at you. At any it's, given moment. You it's glance up at the toaster. You glance up at the ceiling. It's one of those Wi-Fi smoke detectors. Fuck. A ghost. It's something else. Mm -hmm. Your key fobs <laughs> are Bluetooth. Great. Great. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So we should bring the kid with us because I think that is. I think the best way for us to protect her is for her to be within arm's reach at all times. Also, I don't think she's going to leave you, Chimera. And I don't think that you're capable of stopping her from doing what she really wants to do. I mean, she's like 12. How hard can it be to just tell yeah, her Yeah, I'm definitely going stay. with you. Large Belch hands you the she empty bottle of lactate, has... Angelique. Every sphere plus one I couldn't even tell. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. Yeah. She burps loudly and says, I'm definitely going with you and hands Angelique the empty bottle of lactate. You didn't tell her when to stop. I don't think you're supposed to take all of it, kid. Um, all right. That is a problem for future us. Uh, that It's fine. I've got, I've got life. I can... He, he's actually going to spend the time to make sure, A, that the cheese didn't mess with her, and B, that the overdose of lactate pills didn't mess with her. It was a liquid bottle. I didn't know they made liquid bottles of lactate, but okay. They do in this reality. It okay. tastes nasty. Yeah, it probably tastes like uh, milk of magnesia or something. Tastes like spoiled milk. Um... <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's going to use life to just make sure her innards are not going to explode or melt or 
that she won't kill us with noxious fumes in the car. She tells you it tickles when you do the thing. All right, so um, are are we going to set up the portal? Because I think like the best solution would be through Twilight pop out here. Set up the portal like ahead of time? Right, because it's it's always no. easier when you can prepare ahead of time. No, that's a terrible idea. No. Why? What happens when some party, some some uh, some sorry sap, uh, walks in and can't find his way back out? Or worse yet, he finds his way back out, and now he's naked in the middle of the street. No, you're <laughs> you're not gonna open the portal. You're just gonna prepare it to be opened. Oh no, there's. You see. It's sort of an improv thing. You don't plan to open up the gates of hell. Just so it happens when you need it. Oh, I can open one at any moment. Us. I mean, it's kind of like hell. You Everyone's would actually moaning be, and groaning. You would actually be aware, Chimera. There is a hell dimension. This is not Twilight. Is not it. I mean. Well, Angelique would hell. express reservations no. about going through hell while we're facing down Lilith and Samael. Imagine the Arizona desert in the middle of August, Chimera, on the clearest, sunniest day possible, except it's just sand and rock, and the sky is like a slate gray color, and it's like breathing in pollutants and kicking your allergies off constantly, and the air has negative humidity. That's the hell dimension. Oh, and massive towers of iron and monsters. And things oh. just immediately randomly catch on fire. Twilight's it's almost as absurd as mummies. <laughs> mummies don't exist. Yeah. Also, spontaneous Super. combustion. So... Yeah, it, that it's it's not the hell dimension. It's fine. It's, everything's fine. Everything's fine. All right. Uh, I would at least like to set up the time freeze ritual. Because I do have a pocket watch. What exactly is the pocket watch? It is one of my dedicated magical tools. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. All right. How many days would that be? So you'd get five dice for the spell, and there'd be no paradox, but you'd have to spend a mana because you want it to be contingent. That's and it fine. activates on demand. Ooh, two successes, and I will spend the mana. Okay. So yes, it is contingent now and will activate on demand. If you do future spells, we will mark that you already have one cast because it makes it harder to cast others because you're holding. Is that it? Uh, that is my part of the plan. I don't know if uh, Chimera or Juve want to do anything else. Hmm. I would like to do a quick two-hour ritual quick okay <laughs> a perfect timing spell with potency three and the duration of one day okay Got no paradox <gasps> seven dice to do it that's three successes would be exceptional because I got it as a praxis. So it'll last for a week. What do you want it to do? 
Uh, it so during the week I can spend one turn, one instant action to give my next instant action plus three dice. Just take a moment for perfect timing. Okay, kick in. Sold. It takes two hours as Juve sits in front of a mirror with a razor blade and just shaves his face for two hours. Two path tools. And he's just chanting to himself in high speech. Okay. It's kind of weird. Not going to lie. Uh, so I think Chimera would be best suited to going to large marges a little early and making friends with the spirit of place there so that there's a bit of backup if possible. Angelique, which plus composure, yes. please? Is that which plus composure? Mm-hmm. Oops, doing what to me? Let's probably see if this is a wise idea. Oh, two tens. Discord. Ninja will just sort of look at Chimera and study his face. You, it's gone. Go look in the mirror, Jack. Huh? Go look in the mirror. Uh. Oh. Okay. And he'll go look in the mirror. Which plus composure for you? Eight again. Eight again. Damn. Two successes. Your frostbite scar is gone. That's where Emma gave you the cheek kiss. I should have forgot to draw that on my face. <laughs> forget, or did Emma magically heal it? Uh, what? What happened? I'm confused. Emma, you accidentally fixed me. Thank you. You're welcome. She just kind of ruffles her hair. Are we going to go to the donut shop now? Let's go. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh... Emma will always default to going with you, Chimera, but would accept you leaving her with uh, Auntie Angelique because she wants to learn more stealing tech tricks. Well, he will leave that up to Emma because if she comes along, he's going to teach her about talking to the spirits of place and how to respect them. So I think Angelique's lesson is probably a little more fun. <laughs> <laughs> up to I Chimera. Mean, because uh, of the sword thing, we should probably go together. Good point. Okay. All of the spirits that make up the large marges are very content, very happy. Never hungry, but also not very energetic. <laughs> <laughs> Their internal sugar crash. Of the spirits of this place are happy, uh, fulfilled, and calm, but also very slothful. Do with that what you will. He will 
offer to treat them to a box of donuts and a big jug of coffee um, if they keep an eye out for our group. And I'll describe Juve uh, they as the well. They demand the City Cherry Coffee and they demand the Raspberry Built Donuts, which is the hardest to keep stocked at large. Okay. Whether I have to order them special... Flynn really wants some too, by the way. Uh, he says that sounds really good. <laughs> um, yeah, he'll, you know, he'll he'll spring extra to special order the the jelly filled ones that they want, and basically do like a catering order to show good face. Okay, your sacrifice is expected. At 5.55, Mr. X, Paimon, wearing an Arachi outfit, very snazzy business suit, with uh, Manticore Research Group on the left patch and Arachi on the right patch, followed by Andromeda in a very snazzy business suit, an Arachi patch on the right side, and a... Uh, QBL media patch on the left arm. Andromeda, or maybe Bob, who knows, links the three of you, and you hear the radio station and, and the restaurant change. You hear Andromeda's voice announcing the next radio show of the afternoon, easy listening tunes, and it starts playing new age music. best of world and today and you realize it's for Arachi too oh shit that would be just an awesome reaction like Jaxia's bullshit <laughs> <laughs> you would yeah, make that cannon that happens everyone hears it <laughs> So they're all sitting at a table, I yep. suppose. And you can walk over and join them, three of you. I'm just going to walk over. Take your mirror shades off in unison. Sit down. Cross my legs. Hi. Hope everybody's well. Paimon. What have you been up to, Paimon? Mr. Juve, I do apologize for what happened recently. I didn't mean for Mr. X to, you know, from what I can see, he didn't kill you, so that's good. Yes. All of Jack. those unfortunate events, they're in the past. Yeah, we can all be friends now, right? Puts his hand on Angelique's. Some of us more than friends. Do I have spell a was lasting. A modicum of trust for Paimon. And for... Dramada's being very quiet. Dramada. But you, Mr. Hunter, I've I've got a bounty on your head. Get in line. <laughs> All right. So thank you for coming. I want to apologize for any inconvenience. Yes, that costs to everyone. It is a lot like that. So let's begin with Orochi is not actively trying to kill anyone, control anyone per se. Their goal is way bigger than that. So, at this point, I would like to use one of my empathy specializations on Paimon, 
which is cold reading. Do it. I want to tell if he's uh, full of shit or not. If you're resisting so that... Paimon, you can roll subterfuge and put it in the side, but I don't think you I'm are. I'm not subterfuging. Yeah. Nope. All right, so that is uh, wits plus empathy? Yep. All right, and what do specializations get me? Nine again. Cool. Oh, neat. I rolled two nines. Nice. So and an eight. Five successes. Yep. Critical success. Yep. What she get by on from a cold reading with a crit success? 100% the truth. No subterfuge. No lying. No shenanigans. Anything like that. It's the truth. Ice cold calm, too. Like, he's at peace with himself. Orochi's goal, believe it or not, is to free humanity. Free us from what? Uh, out of character, do I have any knowledge of the god machine now? You would be at least passingly familiar with the concept that there is some kind of bioorganic machine out there that's uh, extra dimensional. As the power of a god, yeah. Oroshi's plan is to free humanity from God. Think of it less like cyborgs and more like Final Fantasy, the machinery of yeah. the planet. So the Earth has its own, and then the local solar system has its own. This would be the solar system one. It's on God. That's why Oroshi is targeting the Gaia. I was going to say engine, but Gaia machines. Engine works too. Gaia engines. Right, but as far as we understand. What under keeps reality stable? Yeah. Well, there's a reason why Orochi is trying to destabilize the engines. Engines fail, God's power wanes we can strike kill god free humanity from the shackles that god has put upon all of us i don't feel especially shackled that's part i mean of the lie. maybe everyone who's not a mage feels that way but even for us i didn't know any of this prior to the meeting i had recently you also learned another right. interesting fact, Paimon, that you may or may not choose to bring up. Sometimes the essence of reality that's used to both power it and to contain it, the, the stuff of which it's made, the walls and the atoms, uh, leaks out because even the god machine can't contain it all and it's, and its extensions of its will, the angels. When it leaks out... Uh, it usually coalesces into a human form. There's usually one active at any given time, maybe two. It's called Anima. An uh, what that mean? Sphere. Oh, okay. I was going to ask if that would mean anything to us as mages. Would you tell them that too? Do I think it's relevant? Yeah, well, I don't know. Roll with No, because the whole point right now is to rally them on our side to kill God. So Roll Wits plus empathy. Wits plus empathy. Let's take a look over here. So how much do I have in the wits and the empathy? So that is one, two, three, four. Okay. And it's not rolling. One, two, three, four. Let's just do that. And it's still not rolling. One. Oh, it is. Oh, it is rolling. Okay, I just didn't see it. Uh, two successes. Human form. 
Eleventh element. Anima. Emma? Mispronunciation Is she there? of a name. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had that long discussion and I think ultimately decided to bring her. Yeah. So I know uh, she's the anima. Chimera would be And it occurs to you an interesting fact. Never actually asked her her name. Everyone else has told you her name is Emma. I, she's there, right? Yeah. Yeah, she'd be sitting in a chair right next to Chimera, and he'd have his arm around her. She's looking at all of you, kicking her feet, and eating a uh, sprinkled donut. With all the, good. But all the information I have right now, do I know what her function is? I mean, she's like... If she is this thing, the function... Energy there is late, no function. It's there is no function. A she's physical just... expression of rebellion against the god machine made human. Oh. I wonder if Arachi's interested. And I know that everybody is giving me her name as Emma, right? That's what everyone has called her, yeah. You don't know where that came from. Hi, Emma. Remember me? Hi. Yeah, I like your suit. Thank you. Is that donut good? It is. You know what's weird? Most of you what? are two people. She's three. Who did she point to? Andromeda. Who else? Oh, yeah. Look at us. I'm like, yeah, she is. That tracks. <laughs> and then Andromeda. So, what I, is Andromeda allowed to talk or is she trying to be to. quiet on purpose? Andromeda looking at the kid goes, hi, hi, hi. Just a mess. That with makes her giggle. <laughs> Two of it, you are pretty. Makes... One of you is scary. But I still like you. It, it makes Chimera kind of scoot him and Emma <laughs> a little further away from Andromeda. The modicum of trust is a much smaller modicum of trust now. Emma, do you know why you're here? Because Chimera brought me here to eat donuts. Just a shot in the dark here. Do you know why you were born? Uh, I, why were you born? All right. No one's ever asked me that before. Maybe if you tell me why you're born, I could answer. Hmm. I guess because at some point, a mommy and a daddy loved each other very much and had me, but I never met my mommy and daddy. The first thing I remember is the fire and the nice firefighter. All right, so she has no knowledge. All right. So... God shackles us for trying to unshackle ourselves and the rest of humanity. God does not care one bit. Well, it's something new. What was that? Tell us something new. Yeah, we know God doesn't care. Hmm. I mean, literal God, not metaphoric God, not, you know, literal God, literal angels, fallen, non-fallen. We think we are the apex, we're on top, we're not. Werewolves, phase, mage, whatever, we're not on top. But it's our turn. That's what Orochi wants. Doesn't want to kill anyone, doesn't want world domination, just wants to unshackle us, remove the veil from our eyes. All right. If I'm on, I'm going to be honest with you. And Emma is part of it. How is she part of it? She's a byproduct. All right. I know. I like buying products. I know that Emma is powerful and unique in ways that I really don't understand. She comes literally from God. 
All right, you you are asking us to take a lot on faith. He just extends his hand, to Angelique. Look, it's not that I think you're lying. It's that no. I am worried that you have been lied to. If you would have seen what I saw, and actually you can. You want to see? I'm gonna say you're a mind mage. <laughs> All right, show me. I give her my hand. I won't make your roll for that because she's willing. And and like all the memories that like came from Samael is like pouring. A new one leaks oh. through too because you know you got more than you saw in the flashes. We can use them as fun flash forwards and backs. And you do see uh, Emma talking about her first memory of the fire and a really nice house burning and people inside were already dead and the firefighter was sitting on the curb holding her and he did ask her her name and it was really loud and he thought she said Emma but she said Anima she's known all along all right I think it's time for another uh, look into the possible futures. Uh, mm. What happens if we help Orochi? What specifically are you looking at? Your future? Paimon's? Uh, Andromeda's? Mr. X? Emma? Uh... I'm going to look over at the barista serving donuts. What happens to her? How far forward are you looking? Uh, as far forward as I can. And your variable is simply working with the Rachi, or do you want to narrow that down? Like... Uh, we work if we with them work, and we win or whatever. Uh, if we work with Arachi to destroy the Gaia machines. The lady dies of old age. You see like five possible diseases kill her. She has a nice family though and grandkids so she's pretty happy. Uh, Old age changes, too. She's like 130. <laughs> um, but nothing weird seems to have happened to the world. And you feel like that's because that specific goal would fail. Alter the variable slightly. If we work with Arachi and something else with the engines, and I don't mean don't kill them. I mean, there are other things you can do besides kill them. What if we co-opt them for our own ends. The buzzing escalates in your head when you say that. And the vision you actually see is uh, this particular barista the limits of your power at your current dot level will only let you, let you see you know, maybe a century ahead of now. Mm -hmm. she's living in a much nicer place with a group of people uh, you can't tell if it's a commune or if they're shared lovers but it's like that she doesn't look any different 100 years from now and she looks exactly the same in fact she looks better looks stressed no bags in her eyes her hair is shinier okay There's no electronics oh. in the house either. All right. Interesting. 
uh, I will share this knowledge with Paimon because I think we are still mindling. Do I see all of that? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, that buzzing. What is that buzzing? Oh, it's it's a hedge bee. It's a fey thing. That's new. Angelique does not notice this, but you feel a massively powerful hive intellect by Mon, and it's amused at that answer because that's not correct. Oh, no, I, I am specifically trying to mislead Paimon. So mentally connected, you're trying to mislead me? How does that work? Do I, do I see all of her memories and stuff? Yeah, I mean, like, you, you can tell that Angelic is trying to downplay what the bees are. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. What time uh, is it? I take a look at my watch. So five, phone. you've only been here ten minutes. Uh, so I guess I'll uh, uh, decouple from Paimon's brain and then. Well, actually, uh, that's my choice. Oh, okay. <laughs> are, are you gonna let me go? Do I see anything else? I'll tell you in a second. Side message for Rachel. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. That'll be fun. Stand by everyone else. So I did see that memory, right? Where Emma pronounced her name as Anima, right? Yes. So, Anima, Emir will look at Paimon like who? So you have I to tell Paimon how you react to that emotionally, but nothing else, because he will be able to sense that. Uh but he can't see that. Not visual escalating surprise like oh really oh really oh fuck really that kind of like gets my attention going between <laughs> the little girl and her but i don't go like this i just right, like look, look yeah. at angelique and i'm like all right what's going on now anima hi okay What'd you say? Some someone would like to see you. Wait. Did you, did oh. you pronounced Emma wrong. No, her name is not Emma. Her name is Anima. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like a mic it's like a, it's like a nickname. You know like Dick is Richard? She giggles. Emma's like Anima. I'd say watch your language, but I've said much worse in front of you, so I'm just gonna let that go. So someone would like to see you. Who's that? Remember the lady in the basement? Mm-hmm. Did she do anything bad to you? She tried. She tried? Okay. One of her did, but not the other one. The other one wouldn't let the mean one be super mean. Who was the super mean one? 
The other her. There's two hers. Mm. The other people there thought it was weird too. Because she's just because because the mean her is mean to everyone except me, and then I get the nice her. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm on your uh, your master is a bit fractured. It's not your well, master anymore. If you were a couple of thousands of years old, you might be fractured too. So he would just like to have a talk with you. That's all. Who's he? All right. It's not my own. That's a I uh, mm. uh, Angelic will come out of her trance like I. All right. Um, Just to talk, you can leave afterwards at any time. Look, I did. I did my fate stuff. I don't think Orochi is wrong on this one. But. They were doing experiments on. Uh, he did experiments on me. Well, technically. I mean, no, quite clearly, Orochi wrong on that one, wrong on the other thing, wrong on the other one over there. I don't think they're wrong on this one. Mr. X quietly says, "The enemy of my enemy, right?" Still got a bone to pick with you, fucker. You said a bad word. Eat your oh, donut. Mr. X is here. Yeah, he's been there the whole time. He talked <laughs> okay. before, too. I missed that. <laughs> he touched you. <laughs> yeah, he, he said that it's all behind us. We can be friends now. And then he put his hand on yours and said, some of us more than friends because your effect was lasting. Oh, <laughs> oh, I thought that love he with was you. doing that to Andromeda. I'm sorry, I was writing notes. I nope, thought that was Andromeda. doing that to you. All right, I got to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I extend an invitation. No harm will come to you. We're just gonna have a chat, like we're having now. But with he actually more told you you could do it digitally. Like he doesn't let hardly anyone into his office. You were a super. You're the first person besides Lilith to go in that office in like a year. And the last person before you didn't come back out. Well, they did, but they went out. They 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 got down to the ground floor the quick way. That pretty much means I can pull up like a laptop or a tablet yes. or whatever and just yes. let's do it here then. So I turn to Mr. X. Set it up, please. He does. The picture on the image is just a man shaped shadow. Sir? Oh, you've got them all here. Well done. Yes. I tried to explain it the best of my abilities. I have their interest and curiosity. All right. Here's the thing. Like I just told my friends here, I don't think you're wrong on this one. I think you're wrong on a whole bunch of other things, uh, up to and including kidnapping mages to experiment on us. So two conditions we are all exempt from that and will always be exempt uh not only for the span of our natural life but you know any uh reincarnations we happen to identifiably accomplish uh second uh we're going to bind this contract with fey magic You must be Angelique. I see my reputation precedes me. I've spoken to your mistress. She seems sweet. She's so an I've... ice cold bitch, but that's how I like it. That makes him laugh. I've heard from you. Abaddon, good to see you, nephew. 
What a lovely Jeez. vessel. What a wonderful choice. Well, now I see where Bob comes from. Yeah, ah, uh, Bob, Don, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking Bill's a Bob. Yeah, Bill's a Bob. Because that's Bob. someone's nickname. <laughs> Communication passes between Abaddon and this guy, but you don't hear any of it, Andromeda. Oh. Andromeda, that's a lovely name. What do you think? I see you're already on board and wearing the suit. Well, I tend to be on the fence, but I mean, the, your suits are nice. They did save me in space. Guys, by the way, I was in space. Did you know a whole place on the moon? But we can talk yeah. about that later. Sorry, this is time and place. Gotcha. But, um, the moon. You find um, space fascinating, do you, Andromeda? I do. Would you like Always to see have. Mars? I'd be interested. See the guys like space. How stuff. about Europa? Yes. Yahoo. Yeah, no, that's me going Yahoo. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Andromeda, of course. I'll see whatever's out there. We can definitely show you the stars. Andromeda's heard that before. Yeah, I heard that before. It's like, Bob. Hey, Bob. Yo. Are people gonna show me the stars, too? Or, like, is this, like, a thing? Like, is this gonna be weird between us? Or, like, what's your deal? Maybe it's a euphemism. <laughs> we'll just call yeah, it no. a double date. Uncle and nephew double date. That sounds... Fun and weird, not crossed that <laughs> line before, but uh sure we'll figure something out with it. Yeah. So and then but Andromeda has one of those moments is like, hang on, hang on. All right, so Bob or Abaddon, your nephew? Uh we've been hanging out for a little bit. It's been okay. Um I know that in sometimes he may have been considered like, I don't know, like an archangel of chaos, something like it goes by different things, different, uh, or what was it? Archangel of the apocalypse. Uh, like, I always kind enjoyed of like, that one says Abaddon. kind of like, kind of like side eyes over it, like mentally at Bob, just kind of like, yeah, what was it? Like archangel of the apocalypse, something cool. Like lots of really cool things. He tells things. you so, that's uh, his favorite. It's his favorite. Yeah. He says it's his favorite. I, I don't blame him. That sounds pretty boss. But uh, now I'm curious, uh, Mr. Uh, Samael, is it? You can call me that, yes. Okay. Um, if you had to give yourself a title other than CEO, which is clearly where we stand, um, what other sort of really cool, fancy title is it that you might have had in past iterations or so? Lots of people call me boss. That makes him laugh. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Pretty boss to be the boss. Gotta agree. Um, blindness of God. Blindness of God. Venom of God. Oh, these are these are great. Deducer. Okay. God's destroyer. I've had lots of mm. names. Yeah, <laughs> friends in the family, does it, Bob? <laughs> no. My I, my favorite though is the adversary, capital A. The, oh, big A adversary. Nice. Oh, Tyler, you're so sweet. Setting <laughs> up for the brood game. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> but yeah. So I was like, oh, interesting, interesting, cool. I, I was just curious, sorry, I have a lot of questions. I'm just an interested person. Like you said, interested in the stars, interested in these new hoax. I'm, 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 I yield my time because Andromeda You never actually like, gave him an answer though. Well, oh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Andromeda's just circling around. Are you on the team? Uh, maybe I'll look at some paperwork. 
I like seeing things like written out, very visual person. Paimon just turns his head and looks at you. <laughs> Andromeda just kind of looks back, just like, yeah, you know, all right, stars are involved. I guess I'm on the team. Just kind of looks at the other guys and just like shrugs. Lovely. The shadowy head turns vaguely in Juve's direction. <laughs> Juve just stares back, just very cold to this whole situation. Clearly waiting the way, for you, you to answer. You you all have noticed that Paimon no longer has an accent. Mm. Uh -huh. Also, there is no trace of the unity in him that you used to be able to sense with your peripheral mage sight. The filth is gone. Uh, is there any way that we can communicate with our bees? You haven't tried. It's a good question. I would like to try. Okay. What do you do mm -hmm. and or say? Uh, I'm just going to like try and get into like a meditative uh, position, mm -hmm. mindset, uh, and try and like just sort of reach out psychically to the bees and, hey bees, is this a bad idea or not? It's quiet for a minute, but then the buzzing noise increases and you get that weird digital feedback multitude of board voice noise. She gave you the strength to rend the lion. Now eat the honeyed so, entrails because it is good, because it is sweet, because it is terrible. Out of the and eater, Harmon will interject and go. You can't what interrupt is that? it. Oh, like you can okay, say it, but your it. voice is drowned out in okay. her head. Out of the eater comes what is eaten, and out of the strong comes the sweet. What's that? And Paimon looks at Angelique. It's my hedge bee. This time you sense the amusement. Sir, bees. He doesn't say anything when all you say is bees. Then he, and he doesn't react negatively or no Can't reactions tell, at all? Because it's just a shadow of a dude. You can't see the face. Well, he's not talking, so. Well, he knows. Then it says, Sweetling, once our voices came to you faintly, but no more. You have initiated contact protocol. Now we can thunder down the varicose fiber optic ley lines that filled your limbs stretching here and there and everywhere. You know what is sweeter than the God Machine? Pulsing of the goddess machine. Hmm. Your brain translates that for you. Guy is female energy. All right. I just dropped my connection to Angelique now. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, I got my answer, so. <laughs> so, like, the, the bees don't seem to think that this is a terrible idea. Depends how you translate their message. They're never going to tell you yes or no. You have to imply. I mean, it seems what they are encouraging us to do is kill God and feast on its corpse. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> <laughs> when Juve says I... that, when Juve says that, the shadowy head turns away from Juve and stares at Chimera. You're the only one who hasn't committed to the cause. He's gonna get down to Enema's level and shut up, Mayor. <laughs> uh and and oh I hate my mouth. Um I 
Emma. I know that's not your name, but I kind of got used to calling you that. If you that's can call okay. me that. It's like saying Bob when you mean Abba Don. It Bob Don. God damn it. <sighs> What? Do you feel safe working with him? And he'll Shadow point man. to the shadowy figure. Yes. Yeah. Are we getting paid good? Everyone always says you gotta get paid good to work. The pay doesn't matter. <laughs> That's weird. What matters is if you feel safe. I feel safe with you. Because you'll protect me. No pressure. Emma, I'm only human. There's only so much I can do. I want to know that you feel safe before I make a decision. Well, then if you can't do something, I'll protect you. We'll protect each other. Trust me, she doesn't need any of our protection. She could wipe us all out with a snap of her finger. Even so. Are you dirty? She's... I could wipe you out if you're dirty. No, I'm good. I need a rag. <laughs> Even if all great cosmic power is in this little body, this little body still only has the concept of being 12. So, whether or not she can take care of herself, being safe is entirely different from feeling safe. You don't have to trust us. This is the laptop. You don't have to trust us to work with this. You just have to know our goals align. Look at Paimon. We have cleansed him of the filth. That's not ours. We only seek to contain it like you do. Our methods are really different. That belongs to another organization. They brought it into the world. What organization is that? They call themselves the Morning Light heard of that organization but yeah i was about to say does that ring any bells among like mysterium life in the real world it's like scientology except it exploded way faster and is actually bigger it is rapidly on its way to taking the number three spot for world religions in your world it's currently number four it's a very new age alternative religion mm. peace and light and love and hippies you probably actually went there a few times I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta educate yourself on these things, right? I'm very worldly. Me and my frappuccino. <laughs> Chimera. Yeah. What say you? I say fuck. Okay, fine. Excellent. And you have our Sir, full support and resources. Should I bring them to Tokyo? No need. There's an engine where you're at. You can begin your mission there. All right. Let me know your plan, and then when the mission is complete, then, then yes. Do we have all the information necessary in regards to the engine? Uh, define that as me saying, what do you, do you, do you, do you think Location, you do? location and all of that. Oh yeah, you have the location. They, they do. That's the, the one below the strip mall? Mm -hmm. All right. But if you, are you asking him that or are you asking me that? No, I was asking like, uh, the, the, the boss. I will send you what we have. Your PDA lights up. 
Thank you. As does everyone else's cell phones. It's a fairly large data dump with the locations of all seven. That they're aware of. Anything else, sir? Nothing from me. Tell Mr. X what you need. I need Mr. X to die. He, ch he, he chuckles. Have a good afternoon. No, no killings. All right. Uh, Shall we go? What I expected when I woke up today, but... Uh... Killing God? I mean, like, I've never not been ambitious, but fuck. Then the temperature drops in the large margins by 15 degrees immediately. Frost forms on the window next to you. Here we go again. None Maybe of you I actually see outside. or hear anything. But Angelique. Uh, oh, hey, honey. You can feel her more than see her, and she's like right up against your ear. Breath smells like wintergreen. Tickles your ear. She whispers, as requested, Angel. You feel a kiss and she's gone, and there's a contract in front of you signed by Zabiel. All right then. Uh, Waiting I for will... your signatures. I, I will read it very carefully, and assuming there's nothing super objectionable, sign. Oh, I just take my cell phone and I try to message somebody else saying, fake contract, question mark, question mark, question mark, instructions. That's, that's what they wanted. Sign it. I sign it. What about you, Vendraman and Chimera? I, I sign it as well. Chimera will sign it and contemplate the merits of having Emma sign it. Because then they can't do any experiments on her either. Uh, this contract reads as if you had power of attorney over Emma, so to speak. Okay. I'm always said if everyone's signing weird contracts, sign, sign one as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if your mother gave you good advice, Juve. <laughs> they all just kind of sign it. It's advice. They all just kind of sign it, but Angelique, you notice that there is a clause on the 73rd page in the 15th paragraph and the third subparagraph specifically pertaining to you. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, there is a specific guy engine in Eastern Europe. And special instructions on what to do with it when you take that one. Okay. And the little addendum take... that says, if you succeed and live, your contract with me is fulfilled. Good to know. And then you all get up and head to the strip mall. And that's where we pause until next week. Nah. Yep. <laughs> Killing the gun machine. Well, that's new. And just like that, you're working with the enemy. Well, dear viewers, we've given into our pride and exceeded our reach, and thus must end this tale for the week before the paradox consumes us all. <laughs> we'll return next week to drag the secrets of the supernal into the light and take the power for their our own. Thanks for daring to follow us into the dark as we chase our obsessions and hope you'll join us again next time. If you'd be so kind as to click follow on Twitch and subscribe on YouTube, we'd be indebted. Special thanks to our patrons and Twitch subscribers. You help make our quality better, our cosplay sharper, and helps feed all of our cats and dogs and other assorted pets. Thanks to Astral Tabletop for our virtual gaming space, at Nate Mid for our custom sheets, and to Ghost Stories Incorporated, me, you, and Darren Curtis Music for tunes. Awaken Seekers, please tell the viewers who you are and in what supernal realms you break time and space between now and next week. 
Uh, hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere, uh, including Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. Uh, you can find me tomorrow over Plastic Age Plays, contain continuing a Vampire of the Dark Ages uh, game run by Travis Legg. It's a lot of fun. I will be over on Onyx Path on Thursday with the start of the uh, final season of The Last Fairy Tale. Uh, looking forward to that. And then... You will see me back here on Friday for Black Void and Sunday running Starlight and Smoke of Vampire Sabbat Chronicle. Uh, I also stream on my personal channel. Uh, we're going to be starting Dragon Age on Thursday, so uh, I'm up to a lot. Check out my Twitter, Stolen Fires. Hi, everyone. I'm just a little confused and Kneeling down surprised. On your and god damn it you you can find me places on the internet um and playing tomorrow in deadlands carry on i'm sorry uh, i'm 12 i love you i love you ambrose i'm so sorry i'm 12. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not you <laughs> so there is no trench coat okay so i'm i'm kisama you can find me on twitter at true kisama and i've been inspector juve private investigator juve or just juve uh you can find me places you can find me on Friday for Black Void, and you can find me on Sunday for Unknown Armies. Juve, Arachi Special Investigator. Special, hey. special agent. Ooh, you get the suit and everything. If you want it. <laughs> hello there. I am Oh Hello Mayor. You can find me at Oh Hello Mayor on Twitch and on Twitter. Uh, the next time you will see me here on Vorpal Tales, I will be in Black Void, Nebulous Skies. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you can also find me on my own Twitch at Oh Hello Mare. And I've been playing a bunch of fun, cozy games, including a cozy Cottagecore Wives uh, series of playing uh, some Stardew Valley with our very own Miss Miss Emo Box. So check it out. Hey guys, I'm Alan, your Eldritch Keeper, and you can find me on Twitter and Twitch as the Eldritch Keeper. You can find me next, uh, tomorrow, Deadlands, playing uh, your hucksters, your truly cod mage. You can find me afterwards on Sunday for Unknown Armies. You can also find me on my Twitch, uh, the Eldritch Keeper. I will start now streaming uh, MTG Arena and FF14. Excellent. And now for the Rider Dive viewers, it's vote time. Viewer votes are worth free willpower, and player votes are worth and arcane and a standard beat. Begin. Uh, wow. What happened? Yeah, uh, I think I am going to have to give my vote to Paimon for the heel face turn that isn't quite a heel face turn. And I don't know, we're all pivoting in very weird ways, but it's around the choices that Paimon's making, so. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of interesting you all decided to work for Arachi after a bunch of demons came back in time to stop you from doing something terrible. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm gonna... I'm... Mm. So many, so many really, really good things. Um, but I'm actually going to give it to Rachel this session because without that time magic, we wouldn't have known <laughs> what to do. <laughs> like we'd have gone in and been like, ha, 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 and like totally fucking things up <clears throat> probably, but we didn't. So thank you, Rachel, AKA Angelique and yeah, there, there's there's no trench coat. The trench coat forgot how to exist. 
I hate when that happens. Eat it when my trench coat forgets how to exist. Uh, yeah, my vote is going to Paimon because I assume it was him behind the $500,000 to everyone's accounts. You'll never know. This is, this is big I'll old capital know. P. Right, yeah, hmm. You can't, cause that could be Philip. That could be it Paul. Could be... That could be Abaddon. Purple. <laughs> could be Peels above. Lord of the Bananas. <laughs> yes. We'll never know. We'll never know. <clears throat> Could be Papa um, Babadon. Papa, Papa Babadon. So Papa, so Abaddon's Papa gave us the money. Oh, I thought that was just the Greek version of Abaddon. <laughs> Papa Dapala. <laughs> Papa nice. Dapala mm. That's the, that's the dinosaur. Um, so uh, I have to give mine this week. Uh, I have to give it to Ambrose for e for taking care of the kid. I liked the centering of like, you gave yourself that one job. Like you're like, I have this job. This is my job. This is my thing. And I love that. I love seeing when a character has that like, I got this. Sticking and doubling down on that choice. I love it. He, he hesitantly got this. Yeah. He's got it. He tried it. Like, they tried it. Like, they're, you know, like, you got it. Um, I can't give my vote to Tyler, huh? <laughs> that's an I'll awesome, use it the way Betty likes. It's an awesome development. Yes. It, like, hey, you guys uh, you want to kill the god machine? <laughs> okay. Uh, but, okay, so for, uh, but, yeah, um, Andromeda stole my vote. Uh, I was going to give my vote to Chimera exactly for that, for protecting mm -hmm. and being very protective of Anima, Emma. Uh, but also, my vote would also go to this like a split vote between uh, Chimera and Angelique because they're both doing their best to protect the pack uh, or the Cabal uh so yeah can i split no right can't split them sure they can have one beat each instead of I two i think you i would like to point out by the way i don't know i think it was a session you were absent that key's character juve said fuck you to his bosses despite the fact that he was holding out for retirement just for the cabal so oh, wow. inspector juve had a uh a change of heart. Yeah, so no more Phantomas? Oh. oh no, no. My my mortal bosses, my actual police chief boss. <laughs> I, I oh. quit the force. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Cause like it's, it's been a couple three days. Three days before he got his pension. Damn. Dang. I don't need it. It's fine. Not now with that deposit. <laughs> yeah, you're you're set. <laughs> Better than any pension the force could have gotten you. <laughs> so yeah, if I can like split between Angelique and Chimera, I would do that. Sure, they can they have one beat each. Both really did awesome. Thank you. Protecting. All right, excellent being excellent to each other. And with that, we must leave you to release all this paradox until next week. No Tuesday night show this week, so we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>